guys, I brought home a kayak. Me widget. Just go upside down. Perfect. Ooh, good job. You're gonna do it again? That was awesome. Do a little flip around. Good. So I'm going to take you guys through Widget's journey of coming home with me on day one and exactly what that looked like and what I did. I get asked a lot about what day one should look like, how long you should leave your bird to settle in. Um, and I don't believe at all that you should leave your bird alone in its cage to settle in for days on end. I believe you should have the opportunity for your bird to interact with you present all the time on that first day one. So I drove an hour and a half to pick up Widget from her previous owner and she traveled in my truck with me in the exact carrier that she traveled on the airlines with with her owner now this is a clear carrier i love these because you can see exactly what's going on with the bird and widget had one toy in there given to her by her previous owner that had plastics on it it has one of those pear-shaped uh, quick links that can you've just probably heard horror stories about little bit of frayed rope on it. I'm all about natural materials for toys. So this has lent for me to make my own toys and I do offer them on my website, but this is one of the very first things I did for Widget because I noticed she was picking at the duct tape inside her travel carrier and I wanted to give her something good to do versus worrying about her ingesting any part of that tape. So I immediately had to pull over and get gas anyways. And while my tank was filling up, I introduced Widget to some of my handmade tiny toys for my own bird tricks line. And she took to them amazingly well. I was so happy. This is a tiny toy. And if you'll play with it, I'm gonna take this one out. And play with it? Oh, good job. Isn't that so much more fun? That's awesome. Widget, we might have to name a toy or design after you and make you a special one. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can put it up like that for her. There you go. Oh my gosh, look at that. She's just loving it. Okay, now I need to get this duct tape out. Holy crap, that's tight. Oh. I was just trying to get it out. I just don't want you to play with it, but I guess if you have something better to play with, you'll be good. Okay, I'm gonna try another toy, since you're just so brave. Nice. Wow. Way better. Good job. Good job, keep playing. A lot of the times when we feel like birds are not receptive to toys or don't play with toys or are fearful of toys, it's because we're offering the wrong types of textures. When you offer things that can't be destroyed, especially to smaller birds like plastic beads or even plastic chains, rubber type materials or foam or things like this that shouldn't be given to birds, um, you're kind of asking for them not to necessarily play with them, but just kind of bump them and, and not really use them. So I look for textures that birds literally go crazy for and play more into their natural instincts, like the materials used in my toys. Day one, I find it really important to offer these sort of natural behaviors where your bird has the opportunity to play in numerous areas around your home and not just confined to one space, i.e. their cage. So I actually don't offer the cage at all on day one until it's time for them to go to sleep usually, and then I want them in a safe space. Um, but for the most part, the cage doesn't even play a role in my day one of interacting with a new bird. Now on the way home, since I did have about an hour and a half drive, I was actually told that Widget did not eat any sort of pellet or 
parrot food mixture of any type. She was mostly just eating the scraps from her human, uh, her human's foods. And so I decided, what the heck, the previous owner gave me a bag of my own pellets that was unopened. So I went ahead and opened it on my drive and just offered Widget a pellet. And I offered her pellet after pellet after pellet, which she readily ate. Um, so everything that I had been told about her refusing pellets was kind of out the window for me and she was completely receptive from the first point that I offered it. So you might need to get creative with this and find a way to offer food that your bird doesn't like to eat in its cage, maybe outside of the cage and change the environment, which usually changes the behavior. Now for me, the most important thing to establish on day one is that you're in a new place which gives you a new diet. And usually it's the healthiest one that I can possibly offer. So in the midst of making food for myself, I included Widget in that uh, experience and she readily started playing with all the food stuff that I had out. And so then I just kind of snuck in my bird food that I make, which is my natural feeding system, and it changes seasonally. I just kind of snuck that in there and she immediately started digging into that as well. So diet went really smooth for me because it happened so naturally for her where she, if you can just get a bird to play with food, it will always lead to them eating the food. Now another important aspect for me on day one is always getting that bird's weight. And based on that weight that I get on day one, that's kind of the range I tend to stick to or try to aim for with the bird in my care, knowing that they came from a certain weight and I wanna keep them around that weight to know that that's probably where they're used to being at. Um, of course, undergoing a vet check, you'll be able to know if your bird's in good body condition or not. But for me, I was just going off of the weight that the bird came to me on. I did find out later that I actually wanted to put weight on Widget because it was not only affecting her behavior, but it was kind of making her a little bit frantic. Um, so I actually ended up upping her weight, which I'll probably talk about down the road in other videos over on Patreon so that I can really dive into detail. Now I think a lot of people when they hear me talk about day one and how I interact right away, it doesn't mean that I'm necessarily forcing myself on the bird and saying, hey, let's be best friends, but I am open for opportunity all day for that bird to come and interact with me. Ideally, the bird is coming to you for the interaction versus you constantly going to the bird. So I like to offer a lot of natural behaviors of playing on the foraging trees around my home and eating the really good foods just so the bird's feeling pretty comfortable and like it has plenty to do and get up to. Um, and things like that. I also like to change the environment a lot. So if the bird ends up on the floor or ends up in a position where it can step up pretty easily for me, I'll change the location that I put it back to just to get it used to different spots and areas around my home that are kind of my bird zones. You look like you wanna be on that tree. She's like, let me at it, man, that looks fun. Can I help you? Good job. Okay, I'll put you on the tree, but I wanna see what much you weigh first. There we go, good job. I'll put you on the tree after, okay? One, four, two. Okay, I'm gonna go on the tree. Let's go on the tree. Don't try to fly there, you can't fly. You can't fly. Okay. <laughs> How exciting is that? Oh my goodness, you are an active little bugger. Do you wanna come see the pellets I put over here in here for you? Come on over. Do you need help? Yeah, good job. One of the really cool personality traits that I've found popular with kikes is they don't tend to be one person birds just naturally. So they tend to be more open socially to numerous people around the home and go to pretty much anybody. At least that's been my experience with kikes, which is something that I really appreciate. So I made sure to introduce Widget to my husband and to my daughter and make sure that on that day one, she got to know everybody in our family unit so that nobody was quite an immediate stranger or anything like that. 
The funniest thing about this is that my husband Dave was not expecting this project bird to come along and Widget, it seemed like really fell in love and took a liking to him and just started following him all around the house, which was the cutest thing ever. And I think he was quite the fan of her too. Just laying here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Did you retreat? No, I lost it. <laughs> Where's the hand? <laughs> Found it. <laughs> One of the interesting things about the difference between me and my husband is that I tend to move quite slowly with new birds, whereas Dave, he's a lot braver than I am and he'll usually push a little bit harder, which either gets him 100 times ahead of where I would actually be, or obviously it can backtrack you if the bird isn't receptive to it. But in this case of Widget, she was incredibly receptive to him and his handling, and he was immediately able to do so much with her that I would have never even tried on day one. Um, and it was pretty amazing to see that transformation in her, and it just immediately seemed to make her a little bit more comfortable in our overall zone. And Capri and I were able to handle her a lot similarly to how Dave was as well. And it was just a really cool kickstart to our relationship and something that I haven't actually had happen on one of my day one experiences with Project Birds. Mostly because Dave's never been so involved. Oh, it's so cute. She gave me a kiss when she landed. Now the biggest surprise to me about Widget was her screaming. She just incessantly would scream, whether we were with her or not, um, but especially if I left the room, she was doing this very horrendous scream that none of us could handle at all. So the biggest bummer about Widget is the screaming. Whew, the screaming's brutal. I'm having a hard time with the screaming. I think the rest of the family is too, but they're, they're being pretty cool about it. I tend to lock myself in my room and play music or something to tune it out. So screaming's difficult because it's not like I can just be like, hey, day three, screaming is gone. Screaming is something that has been reinforced over time to create that bad habit and that bad behavior and is something that has to be uncreated over a lot more time. So the time that it takes to create a screamer, you have to multiply that by like a hundred to get that behavior to go extinct. So we are doing what we can in not reinforcing it, um, but it's gonna, that's gonna be something that even the new owner of Widget is going to always have to work at undoing because she's gonna keep trying and see like, will it work today? Will it work tomorrow? Will it work for this amount of time or that amount of time? And it's hard because we feel locked in our own house where we can't come out because we don't wanna accidentally reinforce. And we have to wait for um, a nice amount of quiet to be able to go out there and see her at all. So. Pretty freaking brutal, you guys. Pretty brutal. Um, and she'll do this, she's done this like on my lap too of screaming. So who knows all the ways it's been reinforced. I have no idea, but undoing it's not gonna be fun. Um, also settling her down for the night proved to be pretty hard. We ended up putting a baby monitor up, um, trying about three times to get her to settle and it was brutal. She screamed for a straight hour just trying to get her to go to sleep where most birds once they're in the dark will usually settle quite quickly and fall asleep easily. She was not having it. Um, we tried 
settling her down cageless. We tried settling her down. Eventually what worked was in her travel cage that she came in. I thought that would make her the most comfortable because she was most familiar with it. So we actually ended up using that for the first three nights. And then eventually I switched to a larger cage in a different location to get her to settle. Um, so again, all the stuff that we really struggled with, like the screaming and the settling down for nighttime, um, and even the food going into great detail with that, I will make other videos about, which will be over on my Patreon just so that I can spend a lot of time going into the nitty gritty details of how long each process, each part of the process took, so you guys can really understand the expectation that was there. But she's a lot of fun and the whole family is now enjoying the heck out of her. And so I'll leave you with this last montage of a little bit of what she's learned since and even her bathing response has come a really far way. I'll give you guys an update after because, oh, good bathing response. Got a treat. Good job on that bathing response. Yeah. Look who did amazing on her shower. She was so good and very chatty. You were very chatty. Yeah. What a good job. I just want to end this video by saying a big shout out and thank you to my Project Bird patrons. They sponsor Project Birds like Widget so that I can take them in, give them the time that they need to eventually, and the training that they need to eventually be put into a forever home. And I love keeping you guys posted with these journeys. So join me over on Patreon if you want to be part of Widget's journey. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> well, somebody else wants to see the birdie. Okay. Birdie. Look who had a shower. Didn't she look great? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So cute. Can I hold her? Yeah. Can you step up? Oh, it smells so good in here. Can you step up? Try your other hand. Here we go. It's okay. Good girl. Good job. You're soaked. Mm-hmm. You're adorable soaked. <laughs> Did she take a shower with you? Yeah.